Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Humberside. Welcome to uh, what is, I'm afraid, going to be another video verdict about a Norwich City defeat. Now, usually I'd start this uh, video and start these videos by reading out the scoreline. What I'm actually going to do is read out the statistics around the game and then I'll come on to the scoreline. Um, possession, hole 30%, Norwich 70%. Shots, hole 13, Norwich 18. Shots on target, hole 4, Norwich 12. Expected goals, hole had 1.87. Norwich had 1.37. The final score, and crucially, the only statistic that matters, Norwich City have been beaten here by Hull City by two goals to one. A, a real calamity of errors for the first goal, a set piece for the second. Um, I've just listened to Dean Smith um, speaking to BBC Radio Norfolk's Chris Gorham. He is trying to urge people not to hit the panic button. And I know that maybe there's a, a hangover in terms of mood from last season. And there is also a willingness to get frustrated. This is one league win, I think, for Norwich City since January. Um, but actually, interestingly, I'm going to come here and, and say that um, this is a really interesting spot that Norwich City are in. And by interesting, I mean, probably better to use the word curious and predicament, maybe than interesting spot. It's a curious predicament that they find themselves in because actually, performance-wise, Things aren't too bad, and, and, and I say that kind of loosely. They aren't too bad. There are signs of what Dean Smith wants to do, of how Norwich City are going to go forward. As someone said to me in the week, they're threatening to be a really good team, and, and they are threatening. And you can do all the analysis in the world, but ultimately I keep coming back to the same point. Either it will click or it won't click. And three games into a season is still unbelievably early to answer that question. For me, it's about looking at the structure of it. And you look at the first 20 minutes, you look at the last 20 minutes, Norwich did a lot of good stuff and a lot of, of stuff that you would say was positive and impacted their performance in a positive way as a collective. The middle, as was the case last week at Wigan, and this is where it becomes curious, perhaps rather than encouraging, was, was quite chaotic. They conceded two goals. They, um, they look structurally a little bit interesting. And again, I use interesting as a negative in, in that respect. And they look quite um, hollow at times as, as a team. And ultimately, Norwich are pretty good at, uh, at having possession and having lots of possession. But by the same token, they get to the final third against a team who, who, who plays a low block. And this isn't a new theme. This is going to be a reoccurring theme throughout the season. They lack the inspiration, the quality, the pace um, on, on, on the ball to really break those low blocks down. And essentially, when you play against a, a really narrow, long ball, uh, low block team, you have to move the ball quickly from side to side, try and penetrate them, but also be aware that actually you might have to bounce back. And the idea of that is just working that block around until it becomes quite tired, until there's an opportunity, there's a space. And then that's when you're then reliant on having quality to deliver the passes through. And, and, and once you've then got to that position it's then about the quality of finishing and those two final parts are the bits that Norwich City haven't quite joined up um, and, and you look at it on the surface Kieran Dow had one in the first half uh, down the end over my shoulder where he should have made contact with Timu Puki's low cross there was one in the second half where Aaron Ramsey missed an open goal if buts and maybes but again we were talking about that last week and probably at Cardiff as well to an extent and and this is the element that all becomes a little bit concerning because ultimately I think what we've seen already is that this is a Norwich City team that's going to be um, kind of judged and um, assessed on their currency. And that currency, the only currency that they're, they're trading in really is wins and, uh, and points. And you look at the points for the first three games, it's one from nine. Um, that's concerning. However you dress it up, Norwich City sit currently at the bottom of the championship table. I don't personally like to look at league tables at this stage of the season. I think it's, it's a little bit um, premature to say that it's extremely premature. And actually, it boils down to the fact that if this clicks, I, I still think there's the foundations and the players of a good team there. Do I think they're well coached? At times, probably not. And that's probably a point that reflects ultimately on the head coach, Dean Smith. And it's about um, ensuring that the rhythm and the momentum in their attacking play is, is there. And there's, there's a crispness to it. I, I still see quite a scattergun approach in terms of how they're trying to break down low blocks there isn't a kind of um and i really desperately don't want to compare to two years ago but the way nori city unlocked low blocks two years ago was structured and, and the thing was everyone knew how they did it they didn't have the quality to stop it 
And this time it feels like Norwich City don't have the quality to do it and teams probably can match the quality in order to stop it. So um, that is where Norwich City are at the moment. It, it feels like this is still repairable. This is, this is still repairable. We're three games into the season. Um, I think they got four points out of their first four games um, last time in the championship and, and went on to win it. It's still so early in terms of overarching conclusions or judgments or statements about where this is going. Um, but by the same token, you're still looking at elements and, uh, uh, and thinking there are concerns. I mean, the first goal, for instance, Max Ahrens clears the ball off Andrew Omabamadeli's back. Uh, it lands to, to the feet of, uh, of, of Espinon, who um, puts it through, through Tim Krul's legs. Um, the second one is, is a set piece. Hull almost have three bites of the cherry because they can't defend set pieces aptly. Um, uh, and again, it's kind of stabbed in at the back post after having a shot saved from Tim Krul and one off the line. And actually, that, first, uh, that second goal came at a period where it felt like it was coming because of, of Hull's performance. So when um, Dean Smith comes out and says they dominated the game and they created enough chances to win, I think those statements are true. But by this, you have to look at the other statements and the other elements of the game, which is that middle portion is so messy. It was so messy. And that's the period where Norwich City have ultimately lost this game. And, and you are asking a hell of a lot of yourself, no matter how good you think your squad is, no matter how good you think your team are, to come back from 2-0 down at any level. And that's to go on and win the game, of course. And this is a game that Norwich City will have earmarked to win. They, they, they will have done that with all of them. Um, and ultimately they haven't. And, and yes, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit conflicted because I stand here and go, well, actually, maybe it's just a win. And, and, and if they get a win, maybe they'll go. And maybe they'll go and, uh, and win five or six on the bounce. And suddenly we'll be talking about this team with a bit of swagger or a bit of confidence. And at the moment, we haven't got that. But equally, I look at it at the moment and it, it still feels slightly fragmented. There still feels like there's a missing piece. It still feels like the performance, whilst I, I think are stepping in the right direction, when they're not being married up with results, and, and that's possible at the early stage of the season. I, I can understand why there's a lot of concern at the moment, to, to be frank. And, and this is why I, I feel so muddled about it, because um, the performances, for the most part, are relatively OK. Uh, and they are probably doing enough to get Norwich City more points than they have got in the opening three games. But they haven't done that. And for as long as those two things don't marry up, the performances become increasingly irrelevant, if that makes sense. So. They're in a really interesting predicament, as I said, I keep using that word. Um, and it's a big week that they have now because they've got two home games against Huddersfield and Millwall, one on Tuesday, one on, on Friday. Huddersfield are coming in um, into it off the back of a win, but uh, have started the season pretty slowly. Um, Norwich even slower though, it has to be said, even though uh, the, the, the highlights that I've watched of Huddersfield of, uh, of them have been pretty poor under Danny Schofield so far. Um, and then Millwall, who are notoriously a very, very difficult team to, to play and, and look I read those statistics at the beginning 70% possession that's fine you can look at that and say yep Norwich City dominated the game fine um, but by the same token did they get the ball in good areas consistently enough was that and when they did do it was their finishing good enough no that's reflected in the expected goals it wasn't good enough they, they didn't have it you've got Aaron Ramsey missing a, an open goal in, in, in the second half um, there was a, a Nunez free kick at the end that, that, that Ingram saved but I still do think that this Norwich team can get there and that this is recoverable. And this is recoverable under this head coach as well, because I, as I said right at the beginning, and I don't want to sort of labour the point or, or repeat myself, Norwich are doing good stuff. They are, opening 20 minutes today, relentless, really good. Should have put the game beyond sight. Last 20 minutes of the game, really good. But ultimately that's come from a position where they're chasing. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see where it goes from here because... It needs an uplift and everyone needs an uplift. The supporters who, who made the trip today will, will no doubt feel disappointed by what they've seen. I think there's, there's an easy accusation to maybe look at the, the hangover from last season. Uh, uh, and I think that's maybe quite an easy criticism. I don't think necessarily that's the case. There is a, a difference in, in expectation, which is interesting because Norwich have gone from having to protect and defend and not concede goals to going and being the person, the team that the onus is on to go and unlock teams and create teams. That's a really big shift that they've had to make in quite a short period of time. And to be honest, they still really don't look like they're, they're, they're there yet. Um, a, a few more kind of things to mention. Marcelino Nunez, what a player. I mean, if, if you're looking for, for positive sparks, look no further. I mean, the fact that Norwich are trying to, or searching for an equaliser, they're pushing for an equaliser. All their play was being funneled through Marcelino Nunez. That is kind of the importance that he has 
um, put on his shoulders already after this was only this was his first full game for Norwich City today. Um, the free kick is mesmerising. There's no other word um, for it. I think to have the quality to get it up, down, get curl, bend, pace on it to beat the goalkeeper, unbelievable technique. We, you know, we've seen the free kicks from the, the highlight reels in Chile to actually go and produce it here was was magnificent. Got Norwich City back in the game, but. It wasn't just that. There was, it was his all-round game. There were some really quality passes. There was some good movement, um, real intensity to press. He, he's got quite a low centre of gravity. That he kind of means he glides past people and he, he, he drops his shoulder well and uses his body well to kind of use the ball. Dare I say it, there's a little bit of Emi Buendia in him in that sense. Um, obviously, I'm not, I'm not comparing the two, but in terms of that aspect of their game, he looks a wonderful pickup. but they need to, to structure it a bit more around him uh, and at the minute they're, they're not doing that um, Jacob Sorensen Jakob Sorensen sorry went off with an injury looks like he's rolled his ankle no I mean you couldn't you couldn't make it up could you they don't write scripts this cruel um, but it, it, it looks like he's he's going to certainly miss Tuesday's game unless obviously the, the assessment is more positive than that but the fact he had to come off and um, went down twice actually before then signalling to come off Norwich end of the game with Kenny McLean in the left back role is concerning that probably makes you think they will now have to dip into the market to sign a left back on loan um, certainly on a short term basis until January at the, at the very least there was no Gabriel Sara no Jordan Hugel in the squad today I must confess I haven't caught up with, with Paddy yet to, to, to hear Dean Smith's reasons for exactly why that was I suspect the latter um, was uh, sorry Hugel was, was, was a selection thing I think Dean Smith uh, as we heard in Friday's press conference back Josh Sargent quite heavily um, and that feels like where he's at at the moment. He, he seems to feel that, that Josh Sargent is ahead of Jordan Hugel in the pecking order. Um, and, uh, and with Sarah, he's obviously coming back from a long-term injury. Uh, one thing I did want to speak about was kind of the subs. Norwich didn't make their, their full rotor of five. Um, that was put to Dean Smith after the game. Dan Elson and I didn't come on. He, he scored and, and set up a goal in midweek. I think his point was effectively, where do I put him on? How, uh, you know, but Ono Hernandez came on and... Look, I, I really like Onel. He's a great character. He's um, been a brilliant servant to Norwich City. He's been involved in some wonderful moments. But there is, he's so frustrating to watch. So, so frustrating to watch. Um, and the end product isn't there and hasn't been there for five years. And to now expect it to be there, I think is quite a jump. And, you know, I said it, I said it at Cardiff, actually, in I think it was our podcast, but it concerns me actually quite a lot that Norwich City are at a stage now where those players that were deemed not good enough two years ago on El Hernandez, Jordan Hugo, suddenly have quite a prominent role in the squad again. Daniel Sonani, you can maybe even chuck into that. Um, that feels or suggests to me the squad is, is maybe not where it was two years ago. Um, and maybe we're seeing that reflected in the results at the moment. But Look, I, I, can, I can see the comments coming through. I, I've seen the social, me reaction, social media reaction to this. I know where people are on Dean Smith. All I would say is um, it doesn't feel like, for me, at this moment, the club have done enough to, to turn the page. Um, they haven't brought people along with them on this journey, on this transition to the championship again. Supporters feel like this is a continuation from what we've seen in the Premier League, where it's defeat after defeat after defeat. The players, when they can see the goal, look like that as well. Whether the, whether it is or not, they will tell you differently, but it certainly looks like that watching from, from the stands. And it all feels quite frustrated and quite um, stodgy in terms of their attacking play. And this is why I, I think it's quite concerning because the mood around the club at the moment is quite close to toxic uh, in terms of of perception and fan base feeling towards it. And this is why it feels like a big week, which feels absolutely absurd. Um, three games into a season to be saying that, but if Norwich City don't perform and don't pick up results at Carrow Road, uh, it's, it's going to be really interesting to see how that's perceived and what the reaction is. And I, and I think I can probably guess what it is, but I don't want to talk it into existence. So um, let's hope that's, that's not the case. And, and like I say, this is recoverable. This is repairable. Norwich City are doing a lot of good stuff. They're also doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing. They're also not doing stuff that they should be doing, as I spoke about in terms of the low block and moving it around. So it's still a work in progress. It still feels like they've got a long way to go. I do just wonder, and this is maybe what, what, what 
ultimately it will boil down to whether the because I think they will improve. I think they will get better. Does that improvement come at a quick enough rate for them to make up um, kind of a, a gap to what they have already? Uh, and also, does it come soon enough for Dean Smith as well? Is is probably the ultimate question. I'm going to close off with with my ratings. Then Nunez, I think, is, is is was way above anything in yellow and green today. I've given him an eight, um, six for Max Aaron's who. I know he made the error for the goal, um, but, but also there was a couple of bursts late on, a couple of really good crosses um, in there. Hanley, Cool and Dow uh, as a six as well, though, maybe arguably for, for Dow. Uh, I'm actually going to, as I'm speaking, I'm actually going to push that down to a five uh, where Omar Bamadeli, Campwell, um, Sorensen and, uh, and McLean sit. And then a, a four for, for Puki, who I feel, you know, I, I've been, I feel like, it's difficult to criticise Timo Buki, right? I also feel like he's not quite with us at the minute, if that makes sense, not fully. And whether that's mentally, whether that's because of, obviously, the stuff that emerged from the summer, I don't know. Um, but he doesn't feel quite here yet. And Norwich City need him to be. Obviously, there's an element of that, as we've discussed at length, about the structure of the team as well. Uh, and, and not feeding that low blocks makes it very difficult for him to have service to feed off, to be completely frank. Um, but not his best day at the office. Some poor touches, some runs that should have been made that weren't um, just cuts a very frustrated figure at the moment in, in truth Milo Rashica, um I'm struggling to be honest I'm struggling to see at this moment in time what he's offering Norwich City um, certainly not any kind of attacking thrust or quality um, and he doesn't feel like a player that's cost nine million pounds nearly and also looking like a player who isn't really here at the moment uh, and that's something that he'll need to prove in the next two home games I'm going to leave it there. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how this all unfolds, I think. Um, I've tried to be level-headed and reasoned about it because I think, as I said a few times, this is repairable. This is recoverable. There are elements of their performances that are good. There's still a lot to fix. Let's see what we get on Tuesday night. It's a big week. It's a big week. Thank you very much for, for watching Pinkin Plus, of course. Uh, the Pinkin Plus app, of course, the place to go for uh, some more analysis and reaction to this game. We'll have the podcast as well and pinkin.com uh, there's some stuff that we've got there as well some reaction from Grant Hanley probably in the morning for you as well enjoy the rest of your Saturday enjoy the sunshine uh, we're going to make our, our long way back to Norfolk and we will see you again very very soon